Hello and welcome to Elementary STEM with Ms. Crosman. Today we are going to be making Lego puzzles. For Lego puzzles, you're going to need two materials. One is a piece of paper with a square drawn on it. I have measured this square out ahead of time. What I did was I decided my puzzle was going to be 10 Lego bumps by 10 Lego bumps. For those of you who are kind of official about this, those are known as pips. So it's 10 pips by 10 pips. And then I'm going to build a puzzle in that using Legos. So you're also going to need some Legos. Now to build your puzzle, what you need to do is make some different shapes that fit within your square that are two Lego bumps high. Because then you're going to challenge somebody to put that puzzle together for you. And when they put that puzzle together, they're not going to click any pieces in place. All the pieces should just slide or be placed into place. This is what I mean by that. All right, here's my square, and he's, here are my pieces that I've made up ahead of time. Notice that each one of them is two Lego bricks tall, and I've made them into different shapes, and I'll talk about that a little bit more in just a minute. And the goal is that another person can come along and fit all of these pieces in this puzzle. Oh, that's not the solution. Let's slide this up so that they can do the puzzle and put it all together. And there's a successful puzzle. So the way I made this was I started thinking, I start usually with letter shapes and I try and make things into different letter shapes. So this is my T, I've made an L, I've made a smaller L, and a couple other L's. C's and E's are good for this as well. Um, O's, things like that. What you want to avoid is making a puzzle with a bunch of I's. And this is what I mean by a bunch of I's. This is a capital I, this is a capital I, this is a capital I, this one, this one, and this one. This is not a challenging puzzle because all somebody has to do to put it together is just slide everything in place. So you really want to focus on different shapes that you can get in. Now I like to do this challenge 10 by 10 for my second graders, but then third, fourth, fifth graders have increasingly larger squares that they have to fill in. Now let's see if we can put this together one more time. I like to start with the big pieces because I always think they're going to be a little hard to get in if I don't put them in first. And there is our puzzle. For students who may want an extra challenge, this is a three-dimensional puzzle. And there's usually a hidden compartment in it. And you have to figure out how to get into that yeah. hidden compartment and get something out in order to solve this puzzle. This one was made by my son, so I'm going to have him come out and demonstrate how you get into this puzzle. Okay. This is my puzzle thingy I made a while ago. So first you want to take this and pull it out. It's just this piece. Sit down. Then you take this, push it in, pull it out. And then to put it back together, just do that. There is one problem I should end up fixing. This is kind of hard to get in place. There. Can you show again and turn it so that they can see this part as you're pushing that through with your finger? Okay. Lego puzzles criteria. Puzzles should be two bricks high. Puzzle pieces are made to slide into place, not click into place. Try to use at least three different shapes of Lego puzzle pieces. And then use the size of the puzzle to make it more challenging for older students. Puzzle box criteria. Create a hidden compartment where you can hide a surprise and have at least three moving parts. 